All right, welcome to Political Voice. I'm Moses Humphrey. Now, um, security personnel of the Port Harcourt local government area and policemen have arrested about 12 suspected internet fraud stars who allegedly buried a newborn baby alive at Andoni Waterfront on Eagle Island River State. The operation which followed the tip-off was in conjunction with the River State Neighborhood Watch. Now, the arrest of the suspected Yahoo boys followed what we we'll call credible information received by the vigilante uh, from those that reside in, in the area. And uh, they said they saw a group of boys conducting incantation and digging the ground by the waterfront. Well, chairman of the um, Falga Security Watch, who doubles as chief security officer for Eagle Island, Victor Ohaji, disclosed the incident to newsmen. He disclosed that on getting the information, he alerted the Azikiwe Police Division in Diobi, Potakot, and the officials of the State Neighborhood Agency. The CSO of Eagle Island said he directed his men to dig the ground where they found the lifeless body of a newborn baby, a baby boy, to be precise, which they exhumed. Now, he said his men, the police and the neighborhood men, started combing uh, the area in search of the renegades, which they eventually cited coming out of a hotel. Now, as things stand, the case is under investigation. Uh, well, so, but we'll look at this um, pro probable cause of it. And uh, why would anybody want, want, want to do this? Well, the why, you, you, you can already assume. Uh, but we do have a guest with us in the studio. We have um, former Commissioner of Police or your state, CP Chooks. And well, uh, good morning to you, CP. Good morning to you too and to the viewers. And uh, we also do have uh, VOP in-house analyst, Cyril Abaku. Good morning to you, Cyril. Good morning, Moses. Now, um, this looks a lot like ritual killing, yes. as it is. One would say, have we completely lost our humanity that you would carry, maybe buy a baby only to bury for the purpose of making money? CP, what do you make of this? It is very sad and uh, unfortunate that things like this are still prevalent in the society. It has shown that uh, humanity is lost every other day and the values are almost completely vanished. At the same time, these uh, mindless set of uh, animals who call themselves human beings are rampaging in different parts of the country, you know. And uh, the way it is, it's a very disturbing phenomenon. And I don't think in any sane society or a society that has meaning for the upcoming generation that such things will continue to happen and the elders and the mentors and stakeholders will keep quiet. Therefore, it behoves on them, you know, people who are in position of authority and leadership, to continue to preach against such things, mm -hmm. that it is evil and should not be contained or condoned in any uh, way or manner. All right. Because um, that is not a way to make money. You have to work hard to make money. And for you to, if you want to make money, first and foremost, you ask yourself, what do I venture into? Are you going to work for government? That is, if they give you space to come and work for them in terms of employment? Or do I veer into the private sector? Or do I even go and learn a trade and be skilled? And then you look out, while you're taking such decision, you must have seen successful people in the furniture industry. 
those who are even mechanics, some of them are very successful. They have very big workshops. You have to be focused. You can't be jack of all trades and think you'll be master of all. You have to choose a career, a all vocation. Right. CP, we'll come yes. back to the points that you have raised now, because yes. you did raise some points. Yes. We'll come back to that in the course of the program, okay. before the end of the show, of course. Yes. Um, Cyril, um, I know this doesn't come as a surprise, but 12 young men, what do you make of this story, really? Isn't that, didn't any one of them think, this is mm -hmm. bad, mm -hmm. this is inhumane? So I think this gives us a clear window into the thinking of quite a large number of our young people. Um, in research extrapolation, if you have 12 out of um, even 100, that's quite sizable. Yes. That, that's, 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 even 12 out of 200 is, 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 is cause for concern. You know? So 12 young men came together, agreed, became friends, became united by a common interest of ostensibly wanting to make money, okay, concluding that they couldn't make this money by, by creating value in society, by looking for um, an invention in or, or, or innovation to pursue, but believing that they wouldn't be able to make it by any other means other than to resort to ritual. They came together. I believe they must have held meetings once, twice, okay. Then some, maybe was, um, somebody brought the idea of where they could source for the baby, you know, they brought money together, they paid, got the baby, then chose the day when they went, when they all came together and their consciences were all dead. Their consciences had, had, had were, were all dead. They believed that they, this was their ticket to whatever it, 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 it was, it was they wanted. Um, I think that these are even the, the ones we see. There are many more that we don't even get to see. In Ekorodu the other day, there was a young man who either in connivance with his mom or overpowered his mom, to take his sister. He actually had killed his sister at a forest, I think, or at a stream. He, no, he killed her at home and was going to dispose her body when police caught him on the road. And what was the matter? He had been told he needed to bring, make a sacrifice. To him. So this is where we are as a society. Um, young people are becoming more and more desperate, be, uh, or have become actually very desperate, and have come to, con to, uh, to, the, to the conclusion that uh, they, 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 they need the shortest cost possible to making uh, money very, very quickly. Mm. And uh, this is the way to go about it. Um, it's a pity today it's, in Portacourt, it's Ego Island. By, by the way, Ego Island in Portacourt is just behind the state-owned university. So you are wondering, this is a place close to a school where character is being molded, where people are, you know, where, where people are schooling. And then Ego Island, you have a lot of students who are living off the campus who you know rent apartments and um, um, what, what do we call those places now? Uh, hostels. Ho yes, hostels. Uh, you know, to to yeah, pri private hostels to, to 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 stay. If it is in such a milieu that, that this is taking place, it means that these young men are also within that that same neighborhood. All right, they may not be too far away from it. Maybe one or two of them even probably stay there. So these are the things that we that that that, that we're looking at. The more it happens the more worse, worse things even happen. Like, today you may hear that there's a baby factory in, in Ondo, in Asaba, somewhere, and that they've got two or three Yahoo boys. Now, then that's, something that's, worse just happens again. That's another thing. That's another thing. Um, but before I come to that, I'll touch on that later. CP, yes. you said seeing successful people as a motivation. When you look at successful people, you aspire to be like them. Exactly. You, you made that point. Yes. But who are the successful people that our young ones are looking up to right now? What are they into? Let's be realistic. Because the successful people that we see are either into fraud. We have the uh, hush puppies yes. of, of this world. We have the politicians that are successful, having money. But then can one say, what's... Uh, can one actually say, okay, these the things they do are things that one should emulate? You see, the situation we find ourselves is that to them, the bottom line is money. To the upcoming generation, the bottom line is money. Uh, in other words, how the money came about mm -hmm. is none of their business. They are least concerned about that. 
And uh, you find out that some of those court boys who are loaded with money always try to put up fronts mm -hmm. that will serve as if this is where the money is coming from. Mm -hmm. But when you look deep, you come to find out that totality of what you see in that place mm -hmm. may not even work up to 500,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this man is rolling out millions, driving Rolls Royce and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So if uh, we will step up orientation and reorientation, catching them young, the youngsters, and try to focus them in the direction that all is not about money. Wealth is not the issue. What you should value more is your integrity, build up yourself to at least have a skill if it is if you are not destined to acquire skill but you're sound enough to do your education go and read your books get qualified cp do you think do you think <laughs> this point you're raising do you think the young ones want to hear this right now that is the problem if you talk about us you know, you know motivating them who are those to motivate them Obviously, it's in the hands of the teachers and the parents and elders in the society. Well, so, not, so not those money bags, because the money bags will never tell you what they do. But the money bags are the ones they see. Yes. The money bags are the ones they aspire to. Yes. Like. That, you see, that's where I fault the society. Those money bags are the ones that are celebrated. They are given chieftaincy titles. They are given the front seats in the churches. The bishop will come and concentrate on him and showering him praises because he knows at the end of the day, the bishop will tell him that the church is doing this project and the man will dole out so millions. The rot, the rot eats deeper. It, 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 deeper. It, it gets worse. It gets worse that those who are supposed to be people that will preach against this are the ones encouraging it. In fact, there was something that happened in Cross River State sometime last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. We are a bishop of a Catholic church washed the sitting governor, Ayade, Professor Ayade, the former governor. He said, this 25 million you're giving to the church. We don't need it. You have people from different parts of Cross River who are hungry, people you should help. Go and pay fees for those who are indigent from the money. For me and the church, we don't need that money from you. These are the type of examples We're looking for. we are looking for. So and should be the reference point. All right, should be, but it's not. <laughs> Let's no, be honest. It's unfortunate. Yeah, uh, Moses, you know, um, it's unfortunate because where all else feels, the family is supposed to be the, 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 the bastion, the last hope, yes. the, ter the terminal point for society. In the same crisis facet that the CP was talking about, some women came together and formed Yahoo Boys Mothers Association of Nigeria. Mm. Very, 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 very so, <laughs> This, we, we have a very, very long conversation ahead of us if we're going to reverse this thing. The likes of Hush Puppy, Woodbury, and so many of them who flaunt their lifestyles on social media, people know but cannot say. Ostensibly, well, I mean, actually because if a man has not been convicted by, convicted by a court of law, you cannot, you know, I mean, you, you, can't, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't convict him otherwise. In your own opinion, or, or, or even in the court of public opinion, he, 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 he could hold you in contempt. Yes. Now, they, but when the bubble burst for those guys in Dubai, the FBI conducted the raid, took them to the US, indicted them, and then that plea again. Now, the question is if these men had been brought back to Nigeria, would we have been able to convict, even, you know, charge and convict them? I think the answer is most likely a no. We saw, we, we, I mean, only, only early, earlier this year, it was the case of Ike Kuremado. Mm -hmm. We've seen the case of Design uh, uh, Alice Madu Ike. An we, if anybody's in doubt as to these cases, look at the one of James Sibori. You have the EFCC, excuse me, saying that they are going to, that, that, that they are filing 20 count charge, 30 count charge. And in the end, you go to court, you can't prove nothing. Then all of a sudden, they, when the UK authorities picked up Ibori, it, I, I think it was about one or two charges, and they nailed it. In Nigeria, can we point to any? Because the Yahoo menace has, has been on for a very, 
very long time. No doubt about it. The, the question is, how many Yahoo Lynch wins? Yahoo Boys, Yahoo, Yahoo Plus, whatever Lynch wins, have we successfully prosecuted to make as a national symbol of deterrence to say, if you, if you follow this path, this is what you're going to get. No, no. You can't point to ESC. When, when, when they stop pursuing corrupt politicians, they, 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 they begin to focus on oh, Yahoo Boys. But what have they really got out of it? How has that campaign itself been able to effectively deter, imagine, send an example to, to send a strong message to say, if you're caught, you won't work free. I think that the time has come for us to consider kidnapping, terrorism, banditry, internet fraud, and there's one other one I wanted to put the on. Cyber you. crime. Cyber crime, you know, no, all of them. There's a, there's a, there's a part, there's a part in, the, in, the, in the Constitution that talks about that. Um, cyber crime and uh, internet fraud. There's sure. A that talks about that. Yeah. But ritual killing is that part of. And also, uh, including ritual, you know, this sort of ritual killing should all be put on the same, within the same trunk. So that we know when the punishment is stiffer. Even if today, government, I mean, you look at the body language of, any, of, of a sitting governor or president, whoever. But the day we have the, a government that is bold enough to, to, to take this matter head on, you will see that when the punishment is stiff, the tendency to want to commit it will recede. But where it is not, as, as is the present case, people feel that they can do this and get away with it. So that's why they continue to do it. Thank God that we found the one on Eagle Island. How about the ones we don't even get to know? But check, check your newspapers. On a weekly or monthly basis, you will find either in the inner pages in Ogun, in Ondo, in Lagos, in Kwara. In there is a pan, the, this thing is an epidemic. Of course it is. Is it many places? Absolutely. Agree. A nineteen-year-old boy wants to be a millionaire. Mm. Secondary school students are using iPhones. iPhone fourteen. I, you know, and and, and, and you're wondering how exactly. So this like CP said, somebody whose mother is selling under a, an umbrella at the market. His father does boss a. Uh, not even a driver, he's a bus conductor, that is bus navigator. So, and they're living in a, in a shack. Then the boy is using a phone that buys a Mercedes. Come on, come on. And the boy buys an E class. And there's nobody, there's nobody to, to be the police to say. He's celebrated when he, when he comes home. Yes, to yes. And, 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 and there's nobody to say, how did you explain the gap between where you are and what you've gotten? Nobody is, you know, is, 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 is interested in that. Now, isn't this poverty? Poverty motivated. Now he did say something that mothers coming together to form an association. The same way we 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 have uh, wives of governors. We now have mothers of Yahoo boys. It's a thing of shame. Isn't it? Isn't it motivated by poverty? I don't. Poverty is not the reason or the yardstick or excuse for people to get themselves involved in wrongdoing. You see, it is value that matters. That's where the emphasis should go. That, look, you should focus on having a good name. You build on integrity and let other things follow. <laughs> it's laughable. You know, I remember my late mother always using this, this, this phrase, a good name is better than... Silver and gold. But in today's world, who cares if you have a good name? Now, who should we blame? Uh, uh, Cyril, what is the role of the media in this? No, so I, I think that um, my, my own generation of Nigerians is a bridge generation. You know, those of us who are born in the 80s, mid 80s, we are the bridge generation. Because I saw, I, 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 I could make bold to say that I saw the best of the last. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing the worst, the of, worst the rest. Yes. of the rest. Yes. Yes. So, for example, um, CP is a retired police commissioner now, right? Over 60 years of age. Over 60 years of age. Yes. So, and I'm um, midway his age. It means that I, in, my, in my teen years, I would have seen his ascendancy. Mm -hmm. I would have seen that time when integrity, com 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 commitment to a nation. I have seen people who went from the lower cadres of whatever it was they were doing to the apogee of their, mm. of their careers. I have I've seen them. I have, and, I, and I've also seen how the decay began from my own generation, as it were, going now back to the Genesis and so on. So in a manner of speaking, if I say I've seen it all, 
It may not be that I've had that that that, 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 that yes, but you you know, but like I've seen both sides of the of the stick, and I can tell you that one. This may sound very funny. Sorry, I just sorry. What I wanted to add to that list was drugs. Okay. Yes. Now, one. That's another. Epi- yes. Um, yes. That's another. Ah, uh, serious thing. Serious thing. One is the fact that years of military rule and corruption. People didn't initially understand what was really going on in this country. The brazen loot of the public treasury. When we return to democracy, and as it were, you know, in democracy, you, you can't control information so much, except maybe it, 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 was, it was classified in, on, under, under military rule, from a military president, a military governor, maybe a sole administrator. Psychologically, the way power flowed was what we tell is what you know, what you know, you, if, if you don't have to share it, you don't have to share it. Mr. Um, the, the CP is, is, you know, being a force man, you know, you, know, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. You only say what you have to say. If you don't have to say it, you don't have to say it. But when democracy came, people began to have access to information and, and began to see how is it that when I say 16, year, 16 years, a, an illegal oil, oil vessel has been in Nigeria tapping oil for 16 years, how old was I 16 years ago? But democracy had come. So I wish you can, you can, you can get my mask. 16 years ago was when, but then democracy had, had already come. And people are beginning to see that there was so much corruption that they were left out of. And so in a bid to meet up with what, we, you know, people, so there, there has been a scramble for, they don't pack so much, make people go pack, and whatever you can pack, people have become, now we are talking about that one in the economy. Government is focused on these things and ASU will go on strike eight months. Doctors will go on strike four months. You know, this is like just something like that. This slowly but surely, surely, our society began to lose value. Began to lose value. Began to, so people said, "What are we? Why, why are we even going to school? Is it not to make money and to and to and to survive?" Hmm. So they began to see that if people in high places are stealing this much, let us grab the, the and we are just here dying for nothing, getting nothing. Half of the members of your leading political class today have been involved in drugs. I mean, your armed robbery. The, the, a former police commissioner who was made a senator said that people he paraded for armed robbery. We are sitting with him on the floor of the Senate. Or was he House of Reps? He said it on national television. An advisor to a governor is being arrested in the US because of a... Uh, you know? So... Like, 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 I'm, it is because it, I mean, the other military, the military, the amount of theft and the corruption that slowly was setting in, setting, setting. When democracy, people, people's eyes were now open to see that this sort of the house has been, has been coming down all along. Make less corruption and get whatever it is you can get. So the scramble has become, has become unbearably, you know, so serious that when you now preach values, it's as if you're talking from a strange and distant context mm. that's where we are and it's worse unfortunately, than unfortunately, unfortunately that when you even talk of integrity people are saying what what, what did he just say now is he serious does, does he know what he's talking about when i was about seven years old there was a policeman who was close to our family in my hometown there was a communal clash between two villages in river state back then in the old river state he went for peacekeeping i still remember his name and he died in the, I, I cried as a, you know, as, as an, knowing that he used to come to the house, you know, today, I'm sorry, see if he's here, but I don't know how many, uh, how, how much, when you hear the police is your friend. I could relate to it when I was a baby, not now. Mm. Even as a baby. Not, <laughs> Even not, as because, a baby. not because there are no good policemen. There are. Even as a baby, parents threaten their, their children with, their... <laughs> with the police. So how, how then you know will, will the child see, yes. see, see the police yes. as a friend? Yes, you know. So I think if you do crime, wrong, I call the police to arrest you, yeah. and the child starts to cry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> let, let me just wrap, wrap my thought in this way: this thing, drug dealing, kidnapping, and all these things have been on for a very long time, but but only a few people had the monopoly to I think practice it. Now that the military ruling, you know, like I said, went away. From 1999 coming, people began to see that. You know, senators have gone to Abuja. When they come back and tell them, see what we've seen in Abuja, what, what, what did you say you saw there? You say, okay, so that thing has, you know, it has been sipping, 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 sipping down. And 
We're in a very bad place right now. A terrible place indeed. CP, let me take you down memory lane. Yes. I, I recall in the early to mid 90s yes. when uh, internet fraud became a major thing. That's, that's when I remember it became a major thing. I don't know, it might, it might date farther back than that. It was a case of, it was a case of, uh, they have taken from us, let us take back from them. Yeah. Yes. That was the mentality exactly. that was you know, in the streets. Yes. Because when you see your brothers, you see our family members, friends and all of that, they all talk about, oh, they have taken from us. The white man has taken from us. So it is just okay if you can find a way to take back from them. Now, that has brought us to this level. Uh, mere fraud using gimmick and all of that isn't working anymore. It is now ritual killing that we have degenerated to. But the question still remains, how can we help save the generations to come in your advice, in your words? Well, it's a Herculean task to clean the audience table. But that is not a reason for us to get discouraged. We have to start, we have to have a starting point. Let us get back to the basics. Children in schools, not really, are not yet formed per se, but from primary school, we need to bring in a lot of morals by way of uh, whether in the curriculum you, you are setting up, you draw a program or you create a subject, a subject matter, that will talk on orientation, reorientation and all that. And as they are growing, we try the much we can to imbibe it in them. And um, by the time they are leaving primary school, although their opinion or their minds are not fully formed, as they enter secondary school, they, will have, so they, they would have built themselves up with some level of values that when you do such a thing, it is against the society's societal norms and uh, values and all that. Then by the time they get into secondary school, that is a critical time that we need to work on them, work on their psyche, work on their mentality, you now make it clear to them, it's not just going to study the subjects, maths, physics, chemistry, and so on and so forth, and pass them. That's not it. You need to look at the aspect of your relationship between God and man, and how at least things that are not acceptable to the society, things like killing, stealing, and so on and so forth, especially for the Christians. You can always read out the Ten Commandments for them and tell them, look, you need to build yourself for the future. Work in such a way that whatever you have, you'll be in a position to justify it. It would have been out of the dint of hard work, not necessarily by trying to cut corners, by killing people, getting yourselves involved in ritual killing or, or being members of cult groups and all that. Because at the end of the day, you should also be emphasizing that what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and at the end of the day lose his or her soul? Well, those of them, I believe, if they have conscience and they have good parents that will always, like my late father used to say, that spare the rod and spoil the child. When they do the wrong things, lash them, not by tongue. Use cane to flog them. Till they get to certain age. <laughs> you know, the Western world is frowning against that. Oh, well, 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 that's, uh, the, that's the Western world. It's, it's gradually entering our system as well. Well, how yes, that, yes. How yes. does that even correct the. You, you know, you, you know the, 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 the flogging, the teacher may not do the flogging, but you are to move, you have a right to flog your child. As a parent. As a parent. You, you and here he cannot. have responsibility. Of course. In the Western world, you get arrested. Of course, he will call uh, 911 or 999, yes. as the case may be, but it doesn't happen here. If police hear that you flog your child, the police will even say, I better give me the cane. Let me help you to flog him more so that he will go well, on. We have, to be, we, we have to be careful not to, not to um, encourage parents to 
um, exert unnecessary force for minor minor, uh, minor uh, offenses. Uh, 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 exactly. Like even there's even one reference point I'll have to give here. When I was CP in Oyo till I left, it is on record and very verifiable till tomorrow. I have never asked anybody to go and bring 10 naira and give me, whether as member of the public or policemen. That is a way to stem corruption. Yeah. I did that. And that was part of the reason why they went and blackmailed me and got me out of the place. I never gave anybody any target that you must bring this. If you don't bring it, you remain in that. I, I, I will remove you from there and put you where you will not see 10 naira except your salary. I never did that. It's documented. So these are part of the ways to work on values. And each time, some people were looking at me, is that, is that the way you are going on your career? <laughs> is, is that the way you think it's you'll ever make that money? You, said this. Uh, you didn't do that. I didn't do that. How? And throughout my 35 years in my career, I never did that. How did your children feel? They were very proud of me. And they, and they are very, very happy with it. We and know. that is why each time they are talking, they will tell you that good name is better than silver and gold. Mm. I come from a background. What matters to me is the pedigree, the integrity. Mm. And that is why I tell people, if you want more, go down. Go down to my town, go down to my street and ask questions. My, I come from a modest family where we have value, where wealth is not the emphasis. But for you to be able to get your education, do the right thing, don't cut corners. Sure. The problem is this, you see, somebody goes from, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer, at 14, 15, they write their school start examinations, <laughs> get it, then they write them and so on. Maybe they, the person wanted to be a doctor winds up with becoming a laboratory science student. From there, by the time they're finishing school, the, the labs don't employ. The labs don't employ those people. The rather I employ microbiology, uh, you know, people who, who study the other things, they, they, they don't employ them sometimes. You come out and even pharmaceutical companies are not there to hire you, then you remember that you are good with uh, selling in your mother's shop. So you begin to buy her extension nail polish, uh, um, and so on, um, nails, artificial nails, manicure and pedicure, to open a shop. Now, how does somebody who wanted to become something as big as a doctor end up with a with your BS on, uh, by the roadside? And you are now realizing that in this same space where you are, your certificate will not is not a guarantee for anything and that you are back to hobbesian to the to the to the to the, to the hobbesian jungle where the fittest survive and in a in a country where education is not thriving industries are on the back foot okay uh, manufacturing and job creation is nothing to write them about power is 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 is, is next to non-existent and you are not and i mean the pressure is telling on you Somebody owns a small shop. They, they sort of, the the bills you will even have to pay, they, maybe God help you that you don't even have a prepared meter in that shop. And then you know you're doomed. Because you, you may wake up one day and see that for, for, for you, for, for not having power for, for a week or for two weeks or a month, they could bring a bill worth 200 to 300 or 200. And you ask him, when did I even consume? They say, that's your bill. So we have a site that, is, that appears to have been organized and arranged to suffocate even the few who want to manage to and make 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 headway in it. When these people resort to these things, we condemn it in its totality. But it appears that they've seen the future of those who have gone and they know that the only way that they can get out of this thing is to get this dirty and do what is wrong. Now I expect that the the protocol to two as I like to call them will be will be a major national matter. Prosecuted for murder. For murder. Yes. And hopefully sure convicted. Yes. And be handed the steepest sentence possible. Of course. Regardless of who. Regardless of. Name. And then the Federal Ministry of Information, the NOA, and all these people should now pick up this matter and make it a national sing song that will make people to realize that we cannot tolerate this sort of behavior in our land. 
if you did this, you, you would have pushed back the tendency for, for people to take, to take the, to this way of life by some measure. A, some, some we are close to, you know, because as Ego Island is here, State University is here, then there's another place, um, there's another, I can't remember the name of that junction, because I schooled there, Maitre Junction, that's the place leading to the university. That was where the NDLA went to arrest a drug baron by, by name, is it 50 or so, Mr. 50 or something like that. People in, living in the area came and chased the NDLA away. People came and, I'm not talking about the rented crowd. People came out because I mean, it's like what happened in Col is it Colombia, Mexico, where they said this man is one man's drug baron is another man's philanthropist. Mm -hmm. We have lost value. And that's uh, what's what's the role of government in all of this? We have we it, government said the bad example. Oh Moses, please don't let us go there. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always and uh, to God knows I condemn this sort of thing. <laughs> but do you know when you hear government corruption, one that says so why are they gonna tell the old boys? Mm. For how, how much is the Uber making? Somebody can carry his pen. Seventeen billion dollars is gone in one day, and you won't go after that. When you're going after your boys, please, government ought to lead by example. Now, how much are the senators that are sitting in the in the House of Senate? What have they done for Nigeria that they are taking two million naira away? Of each senator taking two million naira away. So, military budget they give them seventy billion naira to do what with it? Judicial at five billion. Our president spends million and a cutting his every year. You can, that's a scam. That's a scam. So sometimes, I mean, it's like reverse so psychology. Who should prosecute? No, them? no, no, who no, no. Should, who the should now do the right thing? Leadership, leadership, <laughs> leadership, leadership has. You see what CP said. I didn't take any money, and it is good. He as he is advertising the fact that he didn't do it to send a message. Government, if by law. Even if by law it is written that the president has the power to exercise certain, certain uh, whatever, he, he, he holds a moral duty to the nation to come out and say, even if the law says this, I personally would prefer to, to tow this path as an example. What are the, all the aircraft in the presidential fleet? The, the salary, the, the, there was a governor who said he wasn't going to take salary that he, he, because he didn't need it. Examples like, like, like that are necessary. To say I'm not doing it, and I can encourage you also pending when we can amend the laws because the, the national assembly doesn't look like in, they're in the mood to mm -hmm. to obtain the advocate if only to, it, it, it will even affect them, you know. So we must be a nation of values, and values don't come by by law. Values come because we have a sense of morality and duty to have, to build our nation. How many of our leaders have, can 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 set that example? Today they are complaining about not there are not enough Christians. There are not enough Muslims, there are not enough there, and there are not enough that. Nobody talks about a common national value that can bring us together and unite and say, how do we solve these problems? No, so Yahoo Boys is, 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 is a national epidemic. Drug barons Drug. in Lekki the other day, somebody had the effrontery to hit a, an NDL official and, you know, to, to evade arrest. You hear that in Ikoi, as in, as at uh, that beach at, uh, is it Lekki also at Lekki? Mm -hmm. Drug peddlers open fire. Exchange gunfire with uh, drug uh, agents and the earlier. in Nigeria, <laughs> and uh, they couldn't arrest any of them. That they all the bush. <laughs> was trying to put the pieces together. But this is where we are. The other one happened in Nikoi. Iko, I think that was on um, Aulawa Road. Aulawa Road. I, I even passed there yesterday. I was like, this is he, he was on that road that the NDLA people and in fact those guys were the NDLA. Because at the end of the day, had, had got, oh, what, what was even the story? But like, you know, there was a consignment. And as the end of the day, they took over the truck, and they, 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 from nowhere, in fatigues, came and we laid them. What kind of country are we running? So people are seeing that if crime, if crime at the biggest levels is going unpunished, mm. why wouldn't they? It is the, the, those crimes are money that used to. Now, let, let me ask you this as we try to wrap up uh, this part of the show. Has social media done more, more harm than good in this area? Is you know, I please let's not blame social media. <laughs> I have a friend who has a PhD in communication studies, lectures in Australia. He told me a story. He said if you went to the Australian police website, you would you can't go, uh, open the page and just go back out. There's something to suck you in. There's a joke there. That you know the color combination and the, and you know the first thing you see, I, see I think is a joke. The FCC has started that. Oh well, maybe yesterday or last night. 
Mm. But no, they have. Uh, fine. But you know, because he was content, he was content analyzing what the FC was doing and just opposing it with what was happening in Australia and telling me that if you enter the website, you if you click it, you want to stay, and you know, and just keep reading the obvious and see and see what's going on. But at in Nigeria, we go to that, go to that Twitter page. If you you said then you said that they started joking, so <laughs> glory be to God. But it wasn't like that before. Now social media is from response to how we use it. As it, I mean, it's like a, a TV station. I'm free to say what I want to say. Social media is government must invest in in modern opinion on social media. When Professor Jerry Ghana led NOA in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the early 1990s, they used to cry as who went from village to village, street to street. They, they know they go there. What NOA later became was that instead of doing the the one to one neighborhood interaction, though they they started putting notes on NTA, you know, on radio and so on. Nigerians are consumers of information. They like to communicate. So what must happen is that we must reinvent that approach of talking to ourselves one on one. If it is social media, let us take over that government must invest in taking over the space. Get the players who can pass their message on to Nigerians and not necessarily um, say that, that social media in, in itself is the bad thing. I don't think it's the bad thing. Um, it's it responds to like I said, it responds to how it is being used. Okay. So it's not necessarily a button in itself. It's response to how we use it. All right, then. Thank you very much. Now, let's go on to another part of the show now. Um, a whooping majority of Nigerian graduates are unable to secure jobs. All right. So it's, it's basically one and the same. Uh, they have been unable to secure jobs after their schooling. And many are having second thoughts about acquiring tertiary education. Now, these group of students believe the time spent in school is a waste. If after... Of graduating, they still have to resort to learning handiwork or, or vocational skill to survive or delving into crime. Uh, with the unemployment rate increasing across the country, many young Nigerians are heeding the wrong narrative, which is, of course, what we just, uh, you know, what we started with. Uh, well, to many of them, education, which is often touted as a pathway to success, is now a time wasting effort that no longer proves crucial as an edge in securing jobs. In Nigeria today, millions of graduates chase after a few thousand jobs in a country where job racketeering, um, favoritism, and cronyism largely play a big role in employment. Well, available data from the National Bureau of Statistics show that the national unemployment rate rose from 23.1% in 2018 to 33.3% in 2020. Also, the global audit and tax advisory firm KPNG in its 2023 report titled Global Economy Outlook said unemployment rate increased to 37.7% in 2022 and would further rise to 40.6% in 2023 and 43. Uh, 43% in 2024. That's the projection. Now, due to all of this is due to the continuing inflow of job seekers into the labor market. The report also said inflation would accelerate to 20.3% in 2023 and 20.0% uh, in 2024. The problem today is with an increase in the dropout rate, um, um, will come a definite increase in crime rates, which is what we are seeing. And the long list of social vices will follow. Right now, we're dealing with uh, uh, an epidemic, uh, which is uh, the abuse of drugs. That is what we are dealing with now. So now, CP, what should we do differently to attract people to education should we restructure the curriculum would that attract people well the uh, young ones i mean the situation we find ourselves today like i said earlier is very very worrisome worrisome in the sense that whether you restructure the curriculum or not at the end of the day that will not create employment to accommodate that large army of graduates. Mm. So 
we cannot because we have so much of unemployment and underemployment will then discourage the youth from getting educated. That is not an excuse. It's not acceptable under any standard. So we should still continue to encourage education and especially make it qualitative. Let's see if we can have qualitative education. Let them get certificated. That can open doors for them, not only at home, but outside the shores of Nigeria. Because I've seen situations where people would have graduated here, made very good grades, and applied for scholarship, and they are given. Not just in Nigeria, overseas. Mm. I've seen so many. Okay. In the US, in Europe, in Canada, in Australia, and so on and so forth. All right. To further their education. Cyril, now. Uh, Cyril, uh, how about uh, the technical part of things? What if we encouraged a lot more tech technical learning in our schools? Would that, would that improve the desire to want to get education and be self-reliant? Yeah, well, uh, the answer is yes on the face of it. Is, is, is yes, because uh, we will never run out of the need to make things, you know, building, construction. Um, so those are skills that, that, that will always be in demand year in, year out. But I think that, fine, this is about school dropout rates, um, unemployment. Um, I think we need to add unemployability to the conversation. I remember somebody was building one giant complex and in this Lagos and he had hired workers to come and he got them to start the work. Um, unfortunately, Moses, he had to send them home and then went to Togo to go and bring people that could do things like plumbing, um, the technical skills you're talking about now. I think Nigeria is in a place where many don't even realize she is. We don't realize where Nigeria is. We're in a place where the man you employ to do that work will rather he made money from off the project mm. than that he did a good work. We have passed that level where Nigerians talk of values and competence and the, no, 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 we've, 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 we've long gone past it. So we're talking about those who are not employed, but even those who are employed, not all of them are serious and interested about, about the employment as they are about making money, about how, about deciding whether it is the job or it's about something that I can just give them money. And that's why um, maybe over invoicing or hiding of files or outright asking for bribes or even those who are employed, what, what, what are they contributing to the economy? A country that does not, that has an Ajagota steel, steel complex that is lying fallow, that's not producing steel, that's not industrializing, our, our family is not mechanized. So you find that there will, there will be more people who would rather not be employed than those who be employed. Because even the companies that managed to survive in the, the past eight years of Buhari's government have packed and gone, I, I know, are, 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 are not packing and going. Before, something like GSK, they were managing to even do things in Nigeria. Before those ones packed and left, towards the end of the, you know, midway and towards the end of the Buhari government, some firms began to do what they call moth balling. Began to pack their their equipment and just keep lock it, just put under lock on, 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 under lock and key. Penny, penny when the sun will smile on them again, because they couldn't do business anymore. With the inflation, I'm glad that they put inflation there because with the inflation rate, which means cost of doing business has gone astronomically high. Very few people are willing to take the risk to put their money down to say we want to do business in Nigeria. So this is why when they say that it is going to rise to 40% to, to, to next year, you, the, the sites are there for us to believe them. Creating these technical and vocational people, that's the people who wait until big money can invest and say, okay, you can do the pipe fit in there, you can do the plumbing there, until big money invests. They, can't, they, they have nothing to do. What will the plumber do if there's nobody who has a contract to build the house, for example? What will a, an, an aluminum works person do? If somebody didn't have a contract to put windows on a facility, what will a, um, who are they now? A welder do, for example. He cannot even do drawing. Am I correct? A, an engineer has to do the drawing for him and put the measurement and say, cut the rod this way, put this. So 
these are people who are basically supervised, who are ancillary to the main function. So where big money is, how many people are constructing in Nigeria? I mean, I mean, serious people who are putting money down to say they're investing. The risk is way too steep for anybody to just come in headlong. Except the government has given assurance that come in, we are going to support you and head you in. So the, the we are it's 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 a lot more. People in the 80s and 90s who did a lot of these ancillary things did it because maybe they couldn't find a way to go to normal school, so they did it pending when they could. So, so you know, some 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 of them began from there and still went on to get a uh, good qualification. But it's even education today in Nigeria is not flexibly arranged in a way that you can be doing one thing and still be schooling at your convenience. We, we, don't, we, we, don't, we don't have those facilities. So this is the answer to the question. People should resort to technical skills and vocational work because they of their own volition so want to do, or because given that maybe they are not able to perform optimally in the more mainstream academic whatever, they are now being you know, asked to see if they can make a headway in that other area. But that we, we now place vocational learning, uh, vocational and skills learning, and mainstream pedagogy on the same plate and say, if you just choose the one you like, and either way, it should be money you want to make. No, I, 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 I beg to think that <laughs> we, we won't be helping ourselves. You see, the thing is this. Somebody who is in the vocational and skills area is not being wired to create value. He is being wired to be a gaffer, to do what he's told, to just deep sea welding. You, you know, you do as you're told. Every day you come, there's a, there's a template. Where, or, 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 or even a, somebody in carpentry and a full street, okay? There's a designer. So the designer gives you say, this is what you do. The person comes in, cuts the, uh, or even iron bending. Yeah, so, you, so you're told what to do. Cut this way, join this way, cut this way. Or maybe you have two or three of them in the, in the, in the value chain or in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the production line. So somebody cuts it to the, and then to another person, then, then maybe they have a supervisor. The people who do the conceptualization and visioning are not people who are trained at, at, at that level. The people who understand the theory, the history, the science, and the practicality of what they're doing. So when people are taking less and less to the area of, uh, imagine somebody says that she's a millionaire for selling Brazilian hair. <laughs> you make more money when you are the one manufacturing Brazilian hair. How can we bring these plants to Nigeria? Somebody says they are, we, we, we have a cocoa from and we are selling cocoa one bag for 400,000 naira. Meanwhile, from one cocoa seedling, somebody is making chocolate in France and Switzerland. That from that one seed, from, from one seedling, out of the bag that was 100,000 naira, they make the cocoa. And one, what's it called? One uh, pack of it. Maybe say, say a pack of 10. Is that, is that 20,000 naira? So by the time they, they make like five packs, they've covered for. Well, <laughs> they've cost used of, five seeds to, to cover the cost of purchase of an entire bag. Yes. You see, the farmer, the person who is, who is, even the factory where they're making the cocoa, the person whose work it is to type the, uh, what they put on the, on the pack knows nothing about cocoa production. Those are the people that we're talking about, and vocational and, vocational and skills based people. The, the people who sit down to, re yes, okay. those, are people, those, these are people who are going to invest in, on that, who have learned, but unfortunately in Nigeria, you have a PhD and come and become a truck driver to Dangote. And people, so government, government, government propaganda tell us that there's, there's nothing wrong with having a PhD and being a truck driver. When you, are, when you should have been trained to think and bring solutions to social problems. So we've seen BSC hold, hold as work, work as a, a security man in Vance. Security man, and they say it is even, it is even day we want. So we, we, we must go back to being a country where value matters. And where people can go to school believing, you know, in the colonial days, what even happened was that when they went to school and came out, they were being trained to serve the colonial government in the capacity of um, clerks and uh, managers and supervisors and so on. But this we are not being trained, excuse me, essentially to build a country. Now, in post-colonial Nigeria, what are the things? What, what are the things that Nigeria needs? Mm. What is the why, why? Why? Why should we even go to school? What do we need education for? We must address these fundamental issues. China came one day and said they, they wanted to be a world power. They wanted to be whatever, and they've tailored education 
to suit that that dream. As a matter of fact, from Chi Jinping to Zhu and Lai to Deng Xiaoping to all the people who have been Chinese uh, um, um, president, they've all been engineers, they've all been construction, all of them. Because China, ostensibly China's dream is to, you know, you know, they build a lot. So yes. all their leaders are from from the current Xi Jinping to all, all of them have been engineers. In fact, the entire leadership of the Chinese of the Chinese Communist Party are all engineers actually. I don't know whether it's deliberate or not. But this you have a sense that this is when they woke up and said one day that they wanted to have about 20, 20 something uh, that they wanted a certain percentage of the country of the population to be millionaires. They achieved it. Because you must tell your education to, to see your national dreams. But I don't think that Nigeria has the sort of dream that it has so what, EMA. What national dream would you propose to the government now, as it is, uh, to ensure that um, school leavers get employment? As if they get jobs, then we'll talk. Then the issue of ritual killing, uh, internet fraud will greatly diminish. What do you think we should put in place now? And if the governments are willing to run with such, we will achieve what uh, we actually uh, desire in the country. Well, Nigeria has a, rich, a, a very rich history. We, have, we are blessed with natural resources in almost every state. In fact, as I speak to you till today, we are still discovering more. All right? So what we, we, what we must do now is to say, what are our areas of strength as a country? What can we tap into for our greatness? For example, I think they found lithium again in the Nasara or somewhere. Meanwhile, we have a lot of deposits in Kwara, I, I think in Kogi and some parts of the north. So somebody was, was, was even saying, uh, because of course, without lithium, we can't produce batteries. The modern battery that we use for our phones, laptops, and so on, mm. is, 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 is from lithium. Can we, instead of selling, the, what we have today is a framework for, for exporting lithium. You must obtain the license so that it doesn't fall, fall into the hands of terrorists. You must obtain a license from the National Ex Export Promotion Council. You must. How can you be exporting lithium when you have it in this abundant quantity? Whatever happened to going to America and Europe and looking for investors who can come here Expand and set up shop? Set up. You can get up to ten. They do up to ten investors. They should come here. Set up people. gigantic factories. And that will give employment too. Create massive. Give them tax rebates for like five or ten years. They will rush down here. Then, in the end, I mean, if that's like for that's just one, one aspect of it, okay? Look at, for example, what um, our rich history in um, our culture, our culture, uh, um, the uh, uh, old civilizations of what, what happened in the Benin Empire and so on. Do you know that if we brought in major movie producers from the US, from, from, from Hollywood, to collaborate with local people, uh, uh, people that help us tell, 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 tell those stories? We're looking at a multi-billion dollar movie industry mm, that will shake Africa. Of course. And you yeah. create jobs that way. Uh, CP, now let's look at uh, uh, quickly too. Yes. Um, we've seen a situation whereby federal government parastatals are not employing as much as they used to employ. So that in itself is leaving a lot more people in the market looking for, for jobs. Now, let's marry that with the fact that Children, those that leave school and seek employment, tend to shy away from certain uh, ministries and parastatals. They would rather go to certain other ministries and parastatals that they consider juicy. What can we do differently to have this, you know, uniformed uh, 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 pay that may attract people across board? Let's do this in two minutes, please. Yes, um, you see this issue of uh, uniform pay. The, like uh, Cyril was saying, the values has been considerably reduced to the extent that some of the upcoming generation and the youth are already focused on certain places that even if their salaries, even if they, they are not going to pay them salary, they are satisfied with going to work in those mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. For instance, some people from Crutch, or let me say from even primary into secondary school, are telling you that by the time they leave, mm -hmm. uh, they are looking at working in central bank. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. will tell you they want to go to custom. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> some will tell you they want to go to Port's authority. Mm. Some yeah, will tell you to, of, N of N N corruption. NPC. Corruption. Actually. Some will tell you an NPC, oil and gas. At that age, they have not even entered university. That is the direction. And their mentors <laughs> are even ready to go and borrow yeah. or to go and loot yeah. to buy such uh, employment exactly. opportunity for them. Sorry, sir. Moses, he didn't, didn't know the word buy? Yes. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we don't have time on the show. Uh, but what can be done differently, CP? Can anything be done differently? Well, you don't have to lose hope completely. They should go back, look at the curriculum, bring in... They being who now? Sorry? They being who? Oh, no, no. The appropriate authority who are formulators of... Uh, curriculums in education and uh, you know various uh, educational institutions let us see how far we'll go then we have to revive the national orientation agency mm. the minister of information will need to do a lot in getting people to get to the grassroots and reorientate uh, people the much they can instead of losing hope completely mm. but all these things we we'll still need security to be in place. Yes. Because yes. if you don't have security, yes. who will want to, yes. uh, I mean, expose himself or herself to danger of either being kidnapped or being killed by kidnappers, mm. unknown gunmen, insurgents, and all that? These are still part of the problem. Mm. Interesting. Yes. So, Suri, let's, let's get your part in short in 30 My seconds. Part, we, 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 we must go back to being a nation of values, mm. a nation of principles, a nation of patriotic men and women a nation of people who are willing to do the most they can for their country at whatever cost and, with, and we don't feel any regret. Um, or, and leadership must now begin to do this by example uh, to make sure that they put, they put people first and lead, lead in a way that people will believe that indeed if we follow the example we're not just plunging into the ocean. But until leadership will, 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 will take the lead, they will know that everything they say is mere lip service and nothing will come out of that. All right, now this is a conversation that could go on and on because there's a lot to talk about in this regard. But unfortunately, this is where we have to draw the curtain on the show. So I must say very big thank you to you, uh, CP Troops, uh, one former um, CP um, or your state, and also Cyril Abaku. Thank you very much, BOP in house analyst. Uh, thank you very much for staying on the program. Pleasure. On behalf of the crew, I am Moses Humphrey saying thanks for joining us. Have a beautiful day.